everybody, it's Gail from Blue Rose Paper Treasures. I'm starting a bit earlier today, only a couple of minutes. I'm just not feeling very well. I'm really badly suffering with hay fever at the moment, so I might sound a little bit nasally. Um, today we're going to be doing the faux tile technique, and I'll just show you um, how I figured out what to do. Um, so just hang on a few seconds until we get some more people in and um, we'll get started. Alright, okay. Now I'd seen lots of these um, samples on Pinterest and I always skipped over them because I thought they just look way too difficult but they're actually fairly easy to make and um, we get to use the scoreboard now I've had this Martha Stewart for a really long time and I've loved it ever since I got it because I don't like um, dark tools like a scoreboard and trimmer um, I know Stampin' Up's got one, um, and I've got the Stampin' Up one, but I don't have the um, diagonal plate. But I, when I got this, I remember when I turned it over, I saw that in there. And it just never come out of there because I never knew what it was used for. So we're actually going to use that today. I was very pleased to find that one of my tools has another use. Alright, so this is a diagonal, it's actually meant for envelopes, I have no idea how you'd make an envelope out of that, but I guess that's a, an example. Um, but I was pleased to be able to use this. So what you do, is you just slide it in flush to the left, it's got a little, a little groove there, and you just slide it in. And how happy was I? That I actually got to use it because I never knew what it was used for. All right, so the three cards that I've got that I had made, um, I did them different widths. This one I think was one inch, this one was one and a half, and I think that one was one and three quarters, or one, not uh, one, one and one, one and a quarter, and one and a half. I wouldn't go any bigger than that. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just show you how to score. Um, it's all, I always use a bigger piece than what I need, so I can trim it down if I have to. So basically, it is so simple. Right, now another thing is if you don't have a diagonal score, a score plate, you can just trim a piece of cardstock, which would do the same thing. Um, that is trimmed to 4x4 four four and cut on the diagonal. And you would just use it in the same way. Just pop it right up in the corner. Um, you have to actually hold it. You could use um, thick cardboard. Um, you could use anything. I kind of use um, just the normal cardstock um, so that I could score. And I will explain that. But first we'll use the, this one. Um, all right, cardstock. Um, these ones I used Whisper White, not Whisper White Thick, just so that I could get... Um, the score line in there so take a piece normal piece doesn't matter what size it is because you can trim it down um, and it doesn't really matter if you um, line it up at the top or you line it up at the bottom but what we'll do is we're going to score one way then we're going to flip it and score the other way so if you're doing it at the top do both flips at the top now, when I started, there wasn't really any, um, I just sort of went willy-nilly with it. But just making sure that you're keeping your, excuse me, oh gosh, I don't feel well. Um, keeping your increments the same. So if you're doing a one inch one, you keep them at one inch. Um, I wouldn't start right on there. I sort of started off on, say, five and a half. So you're just going to score down five and a half. Six and a half. I'm doing a one inch one. Six and a half. Seven and a half. I'd even go right to the end. Eight and a half. And then come down to four and a half. Three and a half. 
and two and a half. And there's your first score line done. Flip it 90 degrees, put it in the same spot, and start with the same increments again. So five and a half, six and a half, seven and a half, eight and a half, and I can even fit a nine and a half. So you do need a 12 by 12 scoreboard um, to do this. Uh, five and a half, so four and a half, and a little three and a half. And there you have it. So they're not actually equal, but that's why I do it a bit bigger. And then you can just grab your, your die cut. And if you want an exact um, corner to corner, exact sizes, then you would use your, um, your rectangles to die cut it out after. All right, so that's the first one. And that was one inch. So that was one inch increments. So I'm going to take this out. And I'm going to use the 4x4 four four that's been cut diagonally. Same way. That's probably too big to fit in there. I'll have to get a smaller bit. Oh, let me have a look. I'm just trim a bit off that. I've probably cut it too big. Okay. All right. So I've cut that to five and a half by four and one eighth. All right. So it's kind of like you need two hands to do this because you need to hold that into the corner. So, like I said, you can do it from the top or the bottom. Um, I find it easy to do it from the top rather than trying to get my hands down the bottom. So, once again, lining it up flush with that um, triangle that you've cut and just do the same thing. So, this one I'll do at one and a quarter, no, one and a half. So, I might just start at three and a half. And I actually use this to score down with. That's why I've used just normal cardstock. So that I can get the bone folder over the top of it. Three and a half. What did I say? Um, one and a half. So, three and a half. Two. Uh, and that will be half. So, I might be able to just score a little half down the corner. Uh, three and a half. So, it would be five. And six and a half. Alright, so this is a one and a half inch square. Flip it 90 degrees and do it again. So I started at three and a half. So two. Three and a half, five. Six and a half. And now you have that one done with one and a half inch squares. How cool is that? So if you don't have the um the diagonal plate that comes with your scoreboard just trim yourself a, a square piece of four by four if you want to do it bigger you probably do five by five uh, i probably wouldn't go that big maybe four and a half by four and a half um so you can just use that and then you've you've got that for the next one but you can use cardstock as you can see i used the cardstock so i could actually score down it um, if it's thick cardboard you probably have a bit of trouble and you might um flick the uh, the what's that thing called a bone folder all right so you can do that as long as you keep your increments the same so that one was one inch and that one was one and a half so you can see the difference in sizes in that all right so that's whoops all right so slide that back in all right so there you go that's something i learned and i was really pleased with learning that so i'll put that away Right now to get it to look like tiles I'm going to work on this one um, this one I actually embossed it in clear embossing powder at the end and I'll show you how I did that um, this one I just stamped an image over it after I had colored it um, and there's a bit of background stamping on there whoops um, and this one I did the same thing I just did bigger squares this one I've actually used two blues I think I used balmy blue and a bit of Pacific point just to give it a little bit of a darker hue down the bottom um, that one I think I did that in pink pirouette because that was my favorite pink color um, and that one I did some coloring and whatever so I'm going to take you through how I did that one and I've already done I've already got one prepared here this is a little bit bigger than what I needed but then I'll trim it down Alright, so first thing I did, um, 
scoring I just stamped the image on the background now this one I just used smoky slate and most of you would have seen my happy birthday to you stamp um, I cut the flower from the cake stand because uh, I just wanted the flowers um, just in case you're running which stamp set I used for this one it was this one so I just stamped the background just randomly trying to get images everywhere and just whoop, whoops just keep turning it so that you've got flowers facing different ways oh I forgot to colour it first didn't I <laughs> sorry my fault let's try this one we'll do this one all right so we're doing a bigger one you're actually supposed to color first all right what I've done is I've got I've done a little sample here the idea is your what you'll do is you'll cut an, a trim an extra one so if you're um, um, when you're doing one just grab a, a scrap piece and um, score an extra one and you're just going to cut a right, right angle out of it and we're going to use that as a mask now I've actually done a black line there to show you you want to leave that line in there clear so that it represents like a grout line so I've done it in black so what you would do is you just put your mask over the top alright I did it in black so you could see it um, sometimes it's a bit tricky to see so you just line it up and just put your mask over the top so I'll use this one now for this one I actually did two different greens I did um, I used soft sea spray and I went over it with a little bit of garden green because my soft sea spray wasn't inked at the time and I've only just bought the re-inker um, I'm going to use the blending brushes I'm going to use the tiny ones um, this one's a good one for this technique because you can get right into the, the little the corner and I've just used one of the smaller ones I don't know which one I'm going to use um, I actually found these ones, which were the cheaper ones I bought, were a lot easier to, to spread it. Alright, doesn't matter which one you start, which triangle or square you start with. It's not a quick process. Alright, so you just place your mask over while holding it. Start from the centre and just work your way up the sides. And you don't want to go sort of all the way up there because that's the bit you want to leave, leave white. And just keep going and I think that must have had another color on it and then I just went a little bit tiny bit with the garden green just down the bottom just to make it a little bit greener if that makes sense all right and then move over lining it up again It's actually better when you hold these at the um, at the, the uh, brush end. You get more control and just colour. You can always go back once you take. I've done that a couple of times. I've taken it off and then I've had a look and gone, oh, that's that's lighter than the other square. All right, add a little bit of the darker green in there. And there you have it. And then just keep moving it. And just keep going I'm going to go a little bit faster so I can get most of it done I've got my green just adding a little bit you see that it's already starting you can already start to see how it's working and go up and do the next one it's very relaxing all right a bit of that one a bit of the garden green move it up so 
So you're concentrating on the center and just moving the brush up and up to the left and right a little bit. Oh, now see so that one I didn't have I didn't have the mask on there properly. You can see that there's a little bit of a white line there. So you can go back. Oh, back over it. You should be able to fill that in a bit. Well, and I've just filled it in. Alright, so that was that part of it. I won't do the whole thing because it'll take me oops, it will take me too long to do the lot. Alright, now we stamp. Alright. So once we've got our colour in there, I'll do a couple of stamps over the top. Try not to overlap it. I do use um, soft uh, grey, what is it, grey granite, oh, not grey granite, it's smoky slate. I do use that for a lot of stamping. Because it's a little bit softer than using black. Alright. Alright, next step. I was just fiddling around and I thought, oh, I'm going to add a little bit of colour to that. So I didn't colour everything. I just used my blends. And I just sort of roughly went over some of the flowers. Over the, over the, um, doesn't matter if you go over the, um, blending very roughly it wasn't they weren't perfectly colored just so i just went over a few of the flowers then i just did a couple of random leaves i didn't do all of them Gotta find the leaves. There we go. So I didn't do all of them. I just sort of did randomly coloured in a few of them. Go finish that one. Alright. So it's starting to look. I might use a bit of darker. How dark is that? It's pretty dark. It might be a little bit darker. Maybe I did use some of that. Yeah, so that's a little bit darker. Yeah, I think that's what I've used. I've used I didn't use the lighter one, I used the darker one. Alright. That's starting to look a little bit like it. And the last thing I did was I grabbed the Versamark. All right, so wait for that to dry because we're going to use the buddy and we don't want to get any of that ink on the buddy. They so just go over the whole lot. And then I just pressed my Versamark straight onto it. And I've just re-inked it, so it's probably going to be a bit blobby. All right. And then sprinkle clear embossing powder over the top. Now you can see that, so I've got a fair bit of Versamark on there. And if you can see that, and just sprinkle it all over. So that's done. And then just heat set it. Always cover up your powder and your versamark. Takes a while because we've covered the whole thing. 
And my heat tool's not heated up yet. Alright. Yeah, we got some power. Pretty much done all right so just let that cool down and set properly all right let's have a look yep I don't know if you can see that and that gives it like a real tile look isn't that just so cool it's still very wet but that'll cool down and that's how I did that last card just add your greeting. Whoops. Jeez, I'm dropping a lot today. Um, just add whatever you... Oh, goodness, sorry. Um, add whatever you want to the top. Um, I concentrated on using the flourishing phrases, which I don't use very often. Um, it's probably not coming back in the next catalogue. So I've just used the die cut. And I've used the butterfly gala butters. I've just put a little butterfly. I've did um, vellum, white, white heat embossing on vellum for the little butterflies. And I just put one on each one. Um, these are, these are, yeah, these are all the leaves out of the flourish thinlet. So the leaves, um, the border and the flourish. I think they came from... I can't remember what that one came. It was just I grabbed something in my scrap. These were all bits that were in my scrap box, so I always sort of make try to use as much of that as I can. Um, I think that was Granny Apple Green, and that was Pineapple Punch. Is it Pineapple Punch? Yep. Um, and just all on Whisper White, and that's the technique. So very easy. Um, as long as you make sure that you've got your mask right over the where the grout is have it when you cut that one cut an extra one so that you can use it for the masking um, that one I actually embossed with the subtle embossing folder after I did it just to give it a different texture on the top so that one was plain I just left that completely plain um, the color that I use for the the pink pirouette um, I stamped the background that was the um, the script out of the Very Versailles set, uh, stamp set. Um, just keep it the same colour that you stamp with, and it just it's just a, a light um, image on the background, not overpowering. And use your darker one for the for the um, if you're stamping images on it. All right, that's all I have today. Um, that one looks all right. Oh no, it's still a little bit, still a little, still drying a little bit. So there's three different ways um, to do the photo technique. Uh, that's all I have for you today. I haven't been very creative because I haven't been feeling very well the last couple of days. Um, hay, if you get hay fever, I mean, it's autumn and I'm just suffering so badly because this, this weather's been crazy. Um, if you get hay fever, you know how debilitating it is and you just don't want to do anything. Um, and I did get a new stamp set the other day and I just haven't felt like playing with it so hopefully doing this is um, going to get me back into it a little bit all right um, that's all I have for you today um, I'll catch him with catch up with you next time when I've got something else to um, to share with you so um, might play with those other stamp sets now I'm feeling a bit better now that I've actually done something creative I think that's probably all I needed I've uh, just been binge watching Netflix for the last two days. I've watched two whole series of two shows, so I've <laughs> done nothing else but crash on the lounge. 
All right, you have a great day and I'll chat to you soon. Bye.